Samantha, you hate me, don't you? In a drunken moment, I found myself asking this tough question to Samantha, a beautiful department head known for disliking men. I'm embarrassed to be seen that way. Then, she began to reveal a surprising reason for her coldness towards men. My name is John, I'm 38. I worked in New York after graduating from college, but exhausted by a grueling job, I quit and returned to my hometown. I was drifting for a while, but then my middle school classmate, Mike, invited me to his company saying, come work with us. I was skeptical, thinking it might be a shady business, but it turned out to be a reliable company, loved by local businesses and corporations, making lighting fixtures for 50 years. At the interview, Mr. Smith, the president, greeted me in work clothes. He was all smiles, a genuinely nice guy. Surprisingly, they served coffee and jelly during the interview, which was informal but ended with a formal we'll contact you in about a week with the results. So, when they called and asked, when can you start, I could hardly believe it and was really happy. This is how I got assigned to sales, and within a month, I felt at home in the company. Most of the employees were locals. Talking with colleagues about family and personal lives, we'd realize connections like my sister might have worked with you at the same part-time job in high school, or I used to live near your house. Has that barbershop closed down? It was a homey place, perfect for me. However, Samantha wasn't a local. She was quite tall, about 5'9". Her striking beauty made her seem unapproachable. She was so competent that she became a department head at 35. Apparently, she had worked at a major company in New York. But her demeanor was extremely aloof. When I submitted work she had requested, she would barely thank me without making eye contact. Yet, she would look at female employees smile and say warmly, thanks, Olivia, that was quick and really helpful. She might be called a cool beauty, but her attitude towards men and women was starkly different. Her overly formal attitude left me feeling dry. Samantha hates men, Mike said, drinking his whiskey at a bar. So she really doesn't like them, did something happen? Well, being that tall, even if she's pretty, she's out of the ordinary. Mike frowned. True, she's taller than most men, but I think she's attractive. When I expressed this, Mike, looking up at my height, said enviously, that's because you're taller than Samantha. Hey, you should date her. Indeed, I'm six feet tall, taller than Samantha. But regardless, I've always liked tall women. My family is tall, and growing up, I always thought my 5'8 mother was cool. I find tall women attractive. But even if I like her, she might not feel the same about me. I can't just date her. I think Samantha particularly dislikes me. It happened a week ago. I went on a day trip to San Antonio, so I bought some cookies as souvenirs. I'll leave Samantha's share here, I said, trying to put them on the corner of her desk. Then, she coldly rejected them, saying, I don't need them. Honestly, I was quite shocked. I made up reasons like she might not like sweets or she's on a diet, just to convince myself. Indeed, she does seem particularly cold to you. Maybe it's that thing where you're mean to someone you like. Mike made a teasing comment, making me almost spit out my drink as I exclaimed, what are you talking about? It's only you who's taller than Samantha. Maybe she's cold because she sees you as a man. That's impossible. There's no way that could be true. Sure, I'm tall. But I'm not good looking, and lately, I've started to develop a belly. I'm an unremarkable guy who doesn't attract women at all. I thought there's no way Samantha sees me as a man. I had a bit too much to drink yesterday, but I made it to work the next day and focused on my job. Around 3 p.m., Having finished my tasks, I was about to catch up on some paperwork when something happened. Samantha, I'm so sorry. I made a mistake with the order, and they said they need it delivered today. 
The female employee, nearly in tears, was Amy. She's just 23 but already has a one-year-old child. Then, we have no choice but to deliver it directly, is the product in our warehouse. Amy replied apologetically. Yes, it's confirmed, but the delivery location is out of state, a two-hour drive, and I, I have to pick up my child, so it's tough for me. Samantha sighed. Then I'll go, oh, but I have documents that I must finish by tonight. The usually cool Samantha seemed unusually troubled. I stood up and approached Amy. I'll go, I'm free right now. Really? Amy looked at me with eyes full of gratitude. Really? That would be a huge help, Samantha said in a soft voice. So, I loaded the products into the car at a warehouse 30 minutes away and set off for the two-hour drive to the client. I'm off then, I said, jingling the car keys. John, please, take care, Samantha said and she saw me off. I loaded the products successfully at the warehouse and headed to the client. They were an interior design company, scheduled to install lighting fixtures the next day. I arrived after 6 p.m. Expecting a grumpy old man to scold me for the order mistake, I was surprised to meet a young and pretty woman in charge. She must have been in her 20s. I'm so sorry you had to bring this all the way here. She apologized, making me feel awkward. Insisting I take a break, she treated me to coffee and pound cake in the lounge. Her name was Jessica. She was 28 years old and the daughter of the company's president. I guess you'll be taking over the business someday, I blurted out. No, I'd rather get married if I find someone willing, she replied with a gentle smile. I thought someone like her would definitely find a good match soon. When I returned to the office, it was past 9 p.m. I didn't expect anyone to be there, but to my surprise, Samantha was still in the sales department. It seemed like she was waiting for me. I'm sorry for troubling you. No, I should be thanking you, John. I really appreciate your help. Her tone of sincere gratitude warmed my heart. Let's head home, shall we? I turned off the lights in the office and locked up. On our way to the parking lot, Samantha suddenly asked, Would you like to grab dinner together? I was surprised. Samantha and I were far from close. In fact, she seemed to have a certain aversion to me. I doubted that two people like us, with such a strained relationship, would have much to talk about over dinner, and it might just end up being awkward. As I hesitated, she said, sorry, you can say no if you don't want to. Thinking that declining might hurt her feelings, I cheerfully said, let's go, I'm actually really hungry. It was late, so only diners and places serving alcohol were open. Since we had driven, we couldn't drink alcohol, but we decided to go to a popular local grill. By the way, this was also the place where I had drinks with Mike. Welcome, table for two. Upon entering the restaurant, we were greeted by a delicious, appetizing aroma. My stomach immediately started to rumble. We were led to a small table in the corner. The distance between us was quite close. A soft, flowery scent wafted from Samantha. Maybe it was her shampoo. Being so conscious of her femininity, I felt strangely excited. What would you like to drink? When the waiter approached us, I ordered Coca-Cola. But Samantha said, actually, I do want a drink. John, will you join me? We can call a cab for the car. I didn't know she liked alcohol that much and smiled wryly. Of course, I'll keep you company until we're both tipsy. So, we ordered beer. Somehow, I think we both expected we would end up drinking. Otherwise, why choose a grill? After the first beer, we switched to wine. Samantha and I surprisingly had the same taste in alcohol. As we recommended our favorite brands to each other, we both got quite drunk. Samantha, you hate me, don't you? Fueled by alcohol, I finally asked the difficult question. Eh, 
No, that's not true, she said, looking away. But you dislike men, right? It's pretty well known among the male employees. I pressed further. Samantha sighed. I'm embarrassed to be seen that way, especially as a manager. I didn't realize I was doing it. Then, she began to tell me why she was cold towards men. Her height had always been a complex for her. She had been tall since childhood, reaching her current height in middle school. Since boys developed later, all of them were shorter than her, and rather than seeing her as a girl, some even mockingly called her tall girl. Samantha had given up on being treated like a girl. However, in high school, things changed. Boys taller than Samantha started to appear. She became close to a 6'1 boy from the basketball team. On Valentine's Day, she bravely confessed her feelings. But he rejected her, saying, Sorry, I think girls should be at most 5'7. That became a trauma for me. I've been uncomfortable around tall boys ever since. I thought it was a terrible story. Many understand that it's wrong to insult someone's appearance with words like fat or ugly, but why don't they realize that negatively commenting on someone's height can be just as hurtful? Then Samantha muttered softly, You prefer shorter girls, don't you, John? No, I actually think I prefer taller women. It's more like they make me feel at ease. Samantha looked surprised, so I explained that everyone in my family is tall, and even my mother is 5'8". I grew up thinking my all mother was cool. Does that make me sound like a mama's boy? Samantha shook her head. There are people like that, huh? She looked genuinely happy. It was the first time I had seen her smile so naturally, and she was so cute that my heart started racing. After that, Samantha and I began to go out for drinks occasionally. Although the atmosphere never got romantic, we did start talking more informally like friends in the bar. Then one day, I was called in by Mr. Smith, the company president. The atmosphere didn't seem negative, so I headed to the president's office without any particular expectations. I was even casually hoping it might be about a promotion. I was offered a seat on the sofa and sat down. Mr. Smith, sitting opposite me, held something. Curious, I looked closely, and sight was a photo of a woman. Photo. Do you have someone you're seeing, John? No, I don't. Then, Mr. Smith said with a smile. You remember that delivery you made out of state? The young lady there seems to have fallen for you at first sight. How about a matchmaking meeting? I was so surprised that I was at a loss for words. That young and pretty girl fell for me. Unbelievable. It's sudden, so I know it's shocking. Take some time to think about it. He handed me a file, which I accepted. There were resume and other photos of the woman. The woman in the photo was wearing a beige, elegant dress and was indeed very beautiful. She was only 28. Why would she be interested in someone 10 years older? Marriage with such a pretty girl. At that thought, Samantha's face came to my mind. What would she think if I went for this matchmaking? I returned to my desk. Hey, John, what's up? You're zoning out. Is that photos? You're not really going for a matchmaking, are you? Shoot. Mike had noticed. He quickly snatched the file from me and checked the contents. Well, she's gorgeous, and only 28. I'm so jealous. Mike exclaimed loudly, unaware that Samantha was nearby. I hurriedly took back the file from him. No, I haven't decided yet. But you'll go for it, right? You don't have a girlfriend, do you? Well, yeah, but... At that moment, Samantha quietly stood up and walked out. Concerned, I quickly followed her. Samantha, um. I called out to her as she was about to leave, and she stopped, looking down. John, are you going for the matchmaking? Well, that's... I clearly didn't want to do it. Because I'm in love with Samantha. But would Samantha accept my feelings? I wasn't sure. After all, Samantha and I are too different. 
Then she said something unbelievable. Please, turn it down. I involuntarily asked, what? She turned around and looked up at me. Her eyes were moist and her cheeks were flushed red. Please turn down the matchmaking. I like you, John. No way. Samantha likes me. Samantha, beautiful, smart, with an outstanding figure, likes someone like me. Is that really, truly true? When I asked her seriously, Samantha nodded affirmatively. My heart felt warm with excitement. It was my first time experiencing mutual feelings with a woman, and I felt an overwhelming joy. I like you too, Samantha. Will you be my girlfriend? I took Samantha's hand, and with tears in her voice, she nodded, yes. Yay. Congratulations, Samantha. John, you actually want Samantha's heart. That's amazing. To my surprise, the sales team started appearing in the corridor. You guys were watching. I was so flustered remembering my own words. Samantha, too, crouched down, saying, I'm so embarrassed, I wish I could disappear. Keep it down, everyone. Let's get back to work. I tried to calm the commotion. But the women surrounded Samantha, excitedly chatting. Don't quit your job even if you get married. John, you owe us a treat now. Mike playfully hit me. Get back to work, all of you. What's all this fuss about? Mr. Smith, the president, even showed up. Shoot, just after the matchmaking proposal, and now I've decided to date Samantha. This is awkward. As I panicked, Mike reported to Mr. Smith. Samantha and John are starting a serious relationship with marriage in mind. Let's celebrate as a company. No, we're not talking about marriage yet. Is that so? Mr. Smith asked seriously. Oh no, is he angry? I stepped forward and bowed deeply to Mr. Smith. I'm sorry, it just happened now. I want to seriously date Samantha, so I must decline the earlier proposal. I braced myself for a scolding, but Mr. Smith laughed heartily. I always thought you two would be a good match. I never expected it to actually happen. Maybe I became a cupid of love. He easily blessed us, leaving me relieved. I'll handle the other party, don't worry. Congratulations, he said, placing a hand on my shoulder. Thank you, I nodded firmly. When I told my parents about my first ever girlfriend, they were overjoyed and insisted on meeting her. Reluctantly, I invited Samantha to my parents' house. Well, your mother is so beautiful. Samantha seemed mesmerized by my mother. I'm not bragging, but my mom is beautiful. I don't look like her at all. Samantha, you played basketball, right? I played until high school too. Really? But I quit in my freshman year. I injured my knee ligament, and even though it healed, I was scared of hurting it again. I understand. I hurt my knee too. They instantly hit it off with a common topic. Did your dad play sports too? Yes. He was in the same basketball team in middle school and confessed to me back then. My mom started reminiscing. Oh boy, spare me, I thought. But Samantha played along, saying, Wow, making a childhood love work out all the way to marriage is amazing. By the way, did John play any sports? The conversation turned to me, making me gulp. Ha ha. In our family, John was the only one not good at sports. He didn't do any sports, always playing video games, my mom revealed. You still love video games, right? They were getting along too well. Really noisy. But both seemed natural, not forced, getting along well. Your blouse is lovely. Where did you buy it? Samantha shifted to fashion talk. Both being well above average height, they shared the common struggle of finding clothes. Seeing them get along so well, I felt relieved. Today is our date. I'm meeting Samantha in front of the cinema. From a distance, I saw her approaching. But she seemed different. Almost everyone she passed turned to look at her. The reason was her footwear. Samantha was wearing high-heeled sandals. Already tall, 
With heels, she was over 5'11". Her long legs and slim jeans were eye-catching. No wonder people were surprised. Sorry to keep you waiting. Standing in front of me, Samantha's face was at the same height as mine. This feels new. Hee <laughs> hee. We're the same height now. I always wanted to try these shoes at least once. But, does it look weird? I shook my head. You look amazing. Samantha smiled shyly and said, Thank you. We walk side by side, naturally holding hands. I'm glad I met you, John. I feel like you'll accept me no matter what, Samantha chuckled. Yes, you can grow as much as you want. Lean on me when you're tired. I'll always be a big tree for you.